<laughs> What's the difference between type one and type two, just for the audience in case they don't know? Yeah, so type two, we consider metabolic syndrome that, that moves into prediabetes, then into diabetes. So there's an insulin, the, the pancreas, the beta cells within the pancreas are secreting insulin, but the cells are not responding as well to that insulin as it should. So what happens is the, the pancreas will secrete more and more insulin. You have a high insulin levels, but it's not, it's not helping at the cellular site. The glucose isn't going into the cell. You test the blood sugar. It's not getting into the cell. It's just staying around in the serum. So you can read that on a blood sugar reading. There's high gl glucose. With type one, there's a somewhat silent autoimmune process that's happening very deep in those beta cells. The immune system is um, destroying the beta cells. They stop functioning. There is no longer insulin produced by the pancreas at all. And so that's why the blood glucose, it's somewhat, um, it's a much more, a greater spike, a greater degree of hyperglycemia because there's just zero insulin there at all. And that's why it used to be called juvenile because it, it used to be called juvenile because only children would develop this autoimmune degree. Now we have to not call it that because juveniles can develop type two nowadays. That didn't used to happen. And adults can develop type one, which also didn't used to be very common at all. What do you, th yeah. what do you think the shift of that is? Is it just our modern life or? Yeah, I think environmental toxicity is massive in type ones that we haven't fully uncovered. I think you certainly have genetics that predispose you to being, um, you know, sensitive to that development. But I think there's an environmental aspect. I think there's so much environmental toxicity that our immune system just goes haywire. It's just too much on the immune system, whether that's a viral load, you know, allergies, uh, poor processed foods, like this all kind of adds up to a perfect storm. Um, and, and definitely the children, you know, just getting their hands on processed foods and eating that for the majority of their lives. That's where you're seeing the type two in children. Yes. It's really, it's been really weird to watch in my lifetime because I'm 50. And I remember when I was a kid, my eight-year-old cousin developed type one and he was a really active kid. You were a really active kid when this onset. So yeah. yeah, he was super active, super good athlete. And I remember being shocked. And at the same time, I had an uncle with type two. And so I actually went digging because I was, I think I was destined to be a doctor since I was little, little. And I went digging to find out the difference because I was like, how do they both have the same condition? Yeah. <laughs> that can't yeah. be right. Because my uncle had a big old belly and he drank too much and he smoked yeah. and he was not yeah. a Midwestern dude, not healthy, you know. Sure. And I think he died of a heart attack. And I, I don't think my cousin fared well. I haven't kept up with him. I don't know how that ended. But and then I had a niece, other side of the family, and she uh, had a lot of issues when she was born and she ended up with type one. It's just, it's just insidious. And like one day they were fine and the next day they weren't. And I can imagine that's really difficult for parents. Like you said, they have, the mom has to become, or the dad has to become a scientist overnight because I guess what I'm trying to drive home here is it's not even just about the figuring out your insulin dose, matching it up with your carbohydrates. It's understanding yeah. metabolic health, which I think you do such a good job of teaching. When I see you give lectures, you're like, we have to dial this piece in also. 